On this episode, we talk about Louis C.K., we talk about India selling paintings, and we talk about law. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode, and this is episode 123, 123 of the Ask Gary V Show. A uh, little flub there on the intro. That's a rare. That'll be a quiz question, kind of a trivia question in the future. Uh, solid mood today because I finally, India, I finally had. By the way, I fully expect your entire. I know your mom and dad are starting to watch the show here and there. Right. I fully expect them to buy this T-shirt. <laughs> I fully expect all people that are hardcore India fans to buy the <laughs> Let's Get Into The Show t-shirt, DRock, link it up. And there it is. And for 72 hours, it's 14 bucks. Bones, as I used to say uh, on uh, Wine Library TV. Uh, and so I'm super excited about that. Let's link that up uh, also in YouTube. Um, and so I'm really excited about this t-shirt. And do, do you feel like this is a big moment in your career to, ha- to have a t-shirt that is so uh, associated with your, your brilliance? Uh, Absolutely. Not? Huge. Or, uh, oh, huge, okay, good. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. Well, like, I, I, I guess with, uh, with that, India, uh, let's get, in get into the show! Show! Yeah, show! <laughs> I know you guys like it. Peanut Gallery likes it. Yes, yeah, Cindy intern. Show! Uh huh. Oh, AJ heard it. <laughs> you were, AJ got confused because you, you thought Mark Yudkin was in here? You thought Mark Yudkin was in here? No, I told Yudkin, to, I mean, the man to never book another show in here. Got it. <laughs> Sorry, AJ. AJ. AJ's running serious business and we're kind of goofing around here on the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, really excited about one, two, three. It's off to a good start. Uh, so, India, let's do this. Sammy asks, we both share an affinity for pickup hoops and social media. What, if any, similarities do you see in these two passion points? All right, Sorry. D-Rock. D-Rock dropped his headphones. Um, you, that better be gray, D-Rock. No editing. We're fired. Um, uh, pickup hoops and social media. Um, I, I think here's the one correlation that comes to mind. I think a good one. Um, I think that it's super interesting in the fact that when you play pickup hoops, you actually don't know who's going to be on your team, right? Usually, ten characters uh, get around. Ten, twelve characters. You shoot some free throws. Uh, five on five. You look at the dynamics, and very quickly, within the first five to ten, fifteen minutes, or if, if it lasts that long, definitely at least through the first five or ten possessions, you're trying to figure out the dynamics of the teamwork on the team on the spot. I find myself very similar going through that kind of motion when I'm trying to learn Vine or Snapchat or Periscope or Meerkat and old school Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, Instagram. Those first days, right? Like something's popped. Like everybody's talking about, I remember Meerkat, this just happened, you know, six months ago. Um, All of a sudden on a weekend, everybody's talking and obviously I'm in a nice brand position where everyone's like, when's Gary Vee gonna be on Meerkat? When's Gary, you know, Beam right now, right? Like you're figuring out uh, your way of doing it on that platform and uh, to me it really does remind me of a pickup basketball where you're trying to figure out the dynamics of the game uh, similarly to early days in social media apps. Nice. That was a really good, let, let's just, let, I know we're, we're gray right now but like, and black and white but like, India, that was a really, really good answer to, to a very difficult question. Mm-hmm. I don't like how you threw me a curveball there to start the show. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting question. I thought that, that was not is that easy. That could have been kind of one of those sillies, like don't bring any value to the audience kind of thing, like ha ah, ha ha, like Stefan stinks at basketball. Like, uh, you know, uh, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but I, I feel great. I, I'm clearly in tremendous form as we are in the 120s. I think I'm really hitting an all time, there's a dark horse chance that the episode in the 120s, you know, 120 to 129 will be considered a great era of the Ask Gary V show. <laughs> Would you buy the one, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of 120 to 129 Ask Gary V Show t-shirt one day? Okay, good. <laughs> the amount of shirts that I'm planning on. Scott asks, 
Louis C.K. doesn't take selfies with fans. Instead, he shakes their hands and talks to them. Would 2015 Miss Manners approve? So first and foremost, it's not my place to judge any, uh, anything. So well, stay calm there, India. Uh, it's not my place to judge Louis C.K.'s execution, uh, how he interacts with his fans. I think, you know, there are very few things that I hold up to a pedestal more than one's interaction with their fan base, whether that's eight people uh, or eight trillion people. I, you know, my, there's one thing that's interesting to me in this is, you know, my first gut reaction, I, I'm, I'm, that's not true. I'm so damn curious if he, desperately like a religion believes that's the right interaction or if he's just shticking a little bit to make a point, it got asked on this show, is it a thing, is it a fight the system kind of play from him? I, I don't know much about this so I'm going on question, right? Um, is there, uh, you see something? What's going on here? Why he doesn't take photos. So I need to check that out, I'm sure it's super interesting. I can tell you that, you're reading it really quick? Yeah. Uh, you know, what's the gist, India? Basically, he just says he doesn't like taking pictures with people. Right, so like, listen, that's his prerogative. I do believe that if you're lucky enough to make millions of fucking dollars to be in the limelight, that there's certain things that you should, I, I think if a fan wants the selfie, that you should deliver on that, but that's just one humble man's point of view. I have tons of empathy if you're introverted or you don't like it, um, but to me, the uh, the fan is always right and, if, and a fan wants a signed book, if it, they want a picture, if they want a handshake, if they just want to thank me, if they want me, if they want to give me their book, um, I'm just very thankful they want to do anything. Um, and so for me, I'm most comfortable in counter punching, reverse engineering the finish line for the other person. Um, but I can't be mad at somebody drawing lines because, who, I mean, he may be a germaphobe. Like, like, oh, but he said shake hands. I, you know, everybody's got their own thing. I see a lot of people who are actually very scared of germs that don't want to shake fans' hands and it's awkward. Like, you know, there's all sorts of things out there. So for me, I think it's a misplay. I think more and more people are going to want to do it. I think it means so much more to them. You know, if you're a celebrity of his value, I'm sure he has empathy to recognize that people want to show off that picture and put it on their social. It's such a, it's like not the event, it's the aftermath of the event. Um, and uh, so I want to provide that for people that value that and, and I'm humble that anybody would want to do that with me and I'm sure there's a lot of people that weren't able to take a selfie that are massively disappointed in that interaction but I respect people creating their own personal boundaries. People are different than businesses to me. I can get really mad at businesses um, because there's people driving that logo but as a human, people have their lines in the sand. Thanks, India. It's from Matthew. Matthew. Now, Indy, you were saying Matthew is super greedy for trying to be on the show. I didn't see that. Well, I know that you don't want it to be awkward when he gets you Friday because you guys are now <laughs> arch enemies uh, because of this statement. Great. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Great. Matthew, Indy and I both agree, more me than India, I just wanted to create an awkward scene, that you already won. I'm seeing you Friday and here you are trying to jack someone's question with another question of your own. That being said, I'm the one that sent it to you because I thought it was really good. So. Good job on hacking, here it is. Hey Gary, Matthew Chamber. yes, the very same Matthew Chamber was one of the winners of the Crew for a Day Challenge. Thank you so much for choosing me. As you can see, I'm resting up for the big day. But before that, Gary, I have a question. Put yourself in my shoes. You just want a trip to meet Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, you're pumped, right? Like you've been following this dude for a while and this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for you. How would you go about preparing yourself for that type of trip? Would you, you know, set expectations and goals or just kind of go with the flow? What would you do if you were meeting you? You keep throwing contests, Al. Keep winning them. That's pretty odd. I listen, I like that. That's probably, by the way, that last part is probably why this question's on the show. I like the bravado. Um, <sighs> respectful bravado is very attractive. Bravado and sanity is not. That is a little forewarning to some of the people's actions in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think that, uh, I think that uh, what I would do is I would probably bring him some English peas because I would know that Gary loves English peas. Um, and not like the bullshit kind, like the big ones, like the snap, like, you know, like English peas, not like Long Island English peas, which are a little smaller, definitely not snow peas, like sugar peas, or they like, have so many different names. Every, every, fa every, 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 yeah, the way, exactly, 118, watch those, the big ones, so I would bring him that. I'd probably bring him like a rare Jets jersey of maybe the second or third round pick in the draft this year. Uh, what else do I want? Uh, I would probably bring some cool Nikes, you know, like something that was like fly like these, like, you know, that would, you know, I would, I would bribe him and, and to, to thank him. No, I, you know, the answer to the question is very simple is, uh, you know, 
The second you start, I've, I think you've already lost. I, I predict that your Friday experience is not gonna be as good as you think because you're already overthinking it. You need to roll in, be you, the end, the end, the end. It works for me so much. Yesterday, Brandon Marshall was here, right? Football player, Jets wide receiver. I'm, I don't even know how to not be myself. First of all, I think I'm better than everybody so I don't get starstruck. It's a flaw and a strength. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I think you roll in with that thing. I think you walk in and you just need to be Basically, as it's so hard, and I get it. I mean, really, around jet players is probably where I struggle with it the most. But yesterday, I crushed it. Uh, <laughs> just you have to be yourself. There's nothing else because, because then if it doesn't, then by the way, this is why I fundamentally believe in being yourself. This is the secret reason to being yourself. If you're not yourself, and then it doesn't go well. You have to think about that for the rest of your life. You like went out of your way to not let the natural thing happen and it didn't go well, that sucks. I'd much rather be like, well, you know, like when I get a comment that like, you suck, or right now the, the USC video and the Monday Motivation video are both going viral on Facebook, right? A lot of people have never seen me before. When somebody says, you suck, I'm like, well, that was, my, that was me, like that's just where the chips fell. But to like, if that was my shtick or if that was a fake version of me or that, well then that would hurt, be like, well, what if I just was me, right? And so that, my friends, is why it's always best because then you don't have to second guess. I want that to be an animated GIF. Sneeze. I know, I never sneeze. You never sneeze. That was super rare. I'm telling you guys, episode one, two, I'm telling you episode 120 <laughs> to episode 129 is gonna have some of the great rarities, some of just the all-time great moments in this show's history. I mean, someone was talking about you if you just sneeze randomly for no reason. What's up? I mean, what? Someone's talking about you. Oh my God, you know what's so weird about that? What? In, uh, in In Russian Jewish superstition in my family, Oh my God, I would say, a lot of Russians watch you say Tochna, which means exactly. Um, in our thing, our superstition is if you sneeze, whatever you said last is true. Ooh, which means that was like one of, that. which means that was one of the truest statements in, in I almost said Wine Library, in Ask Gary V uh, episode history. That was a really good statement. And it happened between episode 120 and 129 <laughs> in the, uh, I'm just telling you guys, this is the golden era. You know like wrestling has a golden era, like sport, like this is gonna be the golden era. I mean I can feel it, these episodes are, yesterday, guys, I don't know if you read the comments if you're in it as hard as I am, like many people thought yesterday was the best episode of all time. And that's coming off the back of everybody clearly emotionally being most into 118 with me and my dad, I got emotional, da 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 But yeah, I mean I brought it yesterday. Today there's a different kind of energy, a little bit more entertaining, but not to, you know, the first answer was super on point. India? Let's keep this going. Derek asks, what's your top tip for a creative mind to start thinking like an entrepreneur? Derek, this is, this is a tough one, right? Uh, there's so many creatives that just don't know how to be a salesperson, uh, entrepreneurial. They, they don't have that gear. They have incredible creative chops. Um, first and foremost, I want to be very careful to try to mold you with tactics that you have no chance of winning at. That's like me saying, like, how do I want to start being a great painter? Well, I can go watch YouTube videos to like be better at paint. I can go buy some good paint. I could start painting. But I have a funny feeling if I like showed it to India, she'd be polite because she's a wonderful human being. But with her artistic eye, she'd be like, yeah, no, Gary, really, like, I could see some stuff there. Like, yeah. I'd be like, fuck, she hates it. Like, so to me, I'm very concerned of forcing people, just because you may be excited about what I'm putting out there or what society's pushing with entrepreneurship, let's make sure the right answer to this question isn't how do I go and find a partner who's a business mind to team up with me as an artist. I can sell way more paintings of India's than India can. Because it's just what I'm great at. You know, and, I, and that's without me really knowing, in, truly, as much as we adore each other, I don't fully know your entrepreneurial sales abilities, but I just know mine are better. Because mine are better than all of yours. And so, just what I feel. And so, um, that to me is the answer to your question, my friend. And, that, and, and obviously I gave that answer because I want to provide, one of the things I think I'm hitting a roll on in this golden era is I'm starting to understand how to answer the question at hand and then in, instead of picking answering the question at hand or making it broad, if you've been paying attention, this is my own self critique, which is why I think we have momentum, I'm finding a cadence right now of how to answer the question and at the same time broaden it to make more sense. And so the real story behind everything I just said, kids, is hey, don't force yourself into things that are not maybe naturally there it's okay to have a business partner, a teammate, an employee. You don't even need a partner. Maybe you hire someone to be the salesperson. Um, So, super important because just like 
how do I become X is a very dangerous game, uh, especially if you just aren't capable, really truly not capable of ever being X, or just being a two out of a 10 index at X, where you better off spending four years to become a two instead of a zero, when what you could have done is gone from an eight to a 12 in the thing that you're actually great at. Time is valuable, my friends. Time is valuable. Awesome. Thanks, Adia. Thanks for your head nods, D-Rock. Your positive reaffirmation really helps me get going. Jay Bear. Jay Bear. We're bringing some real marketing beasts here. Hey, here's my question for Gary. Gary, which do you care about more? Interacting with people who are your fans, who love you, or interacting with people who don't like you, who are haters? Where do you spend most of your time? Ah, uh, Jay, this is such a, man, Jay is such a smart guy. And actually, you know what, Jay, you may take this as an insult. Jay's a nicer guy than he is smart. And so, um, just a good dude. Um, Jay, I think that um, uh, I think that there's some interesting dynamics to this question. I would tell you, me, uh, 2006 until 2013, I would have answered the haters. I love the challenge, you know me, I love the climb, I love the challenge of converting. I also very much believe I'm a good dude. So many people didn't think I was on their first impact because they thought I had too much ego uh, or I cursed. Those would be the two things that most turn people off when they're first interacting with me. Many of you felt that about me. As a matter of fact, leave that in the comments if you were one of them. Uh, you know, as somebody who, you know, the cursing really was standoffish or this guy thinks he's the greatest of all time. It's been interesting, if you watch people that are commenting over the last couple episodes, especially in this golden era, you'll see a lot of people talking about you know, how humble you are. And I laugh because I know so many people would see that and be like, what? You, know, you start getting to see the layers as they go over time and that's why I always say I'm gonna win in the course of a marathon. So I really, really was all about the haters. All the negative reviews on this, I went you know, the first 100 bad and replied to and engaged with. And then something switched. And then I said, you know what, I'm disproportionately spending my time on the converted versus all these wonderful people that are giving me these nice accolades and comments and so many of you know, especially in Facebook because I've been, everybody that's been sharing these, these episodes and then commenting, I've been jumping in randomly and saying thank you because I'm so thankful. Somebody decided to share this, that, by the way, that's a subtle cue to have every single person who's watching this right now share it on Facebook. You know, everybody that's sharing it and getting their friends to see this and bringing me new audience, it's an incredible, that's incredible versus somebody saying you're a douchebag. Like, I need to reward that behavior because they get happy with the engagement too. So I think I'm in a much better balance. I would even say that I'm probably 80% the positive, 20% the negative, but, but I'm still very committed. It's just maybe because, knock on wood, the new show is a format that is leading to more people liking me the, you know, the keynotes are so brash, the one-off rants are so brash that if that's the first impact, but the show has, you know, a different tone to it that allows more people, I, I'm far more consumable if the first thing that you ever saw was this show versus, you know, especially depending on the first question, I still have got that in me, but, so I would say both. I think both matter tremendously. I'm so disappointed in my contemporaries and friends who disregard and just label anybody that disagrees with them a hater. I actually fully understand why people disagree with me. I have very narrow views, as a matter of fact, that are completely predicated on where I think the market's going, which are not very clear to everybody else. I've got nothing for, but confidence. Confidence for days, with like four Zs, right? I've got confidence for days. Um, I communicate in a certain style. It's very East Coast. It's Jersey in the house. Like, I understand. Like, I hate Patriot fans. I fucking hate you guys. You know, I get that. That not feels nice if you're like watching this and you're like a Patriot fan. I'm like, oh wait, wait, Gary hates me, weird. You know, like, I've got my dynamics. But, um, what it all really comes down to is everybody matters and I have enormous empathy to why people disagree or might be put off by me in the beginning and I think that they absolutely deserve my attention just as much as somebody who says I'm the greatest of all time. I like all people, whether they agree with me or not, um, whether they think I'm a dick or not, um, it's just all very understandable for me and I also feel extremely at peace at to where this all nets out in our relationship. That's it, cool. Another good show. In Mark Yudkin's office, this is like the lawyer office. Look at all this like weird stuff. Oh, this one, sorry. Look at all this weird stuff Yudkin's got. Look at all this, like, look at this, guys. Like, New York laws. You know, this is, like, this is what Yudkin does. He's like, oh God, uh, no, you can't do that. It's all very, very interesting stuff that Yudkin gets to do here. I don't even know how to put it back. Uh, question of the day. Who 
in your family is a lawyer? Friends and family network, put their name down. Tag them even in Facebook so I can say, hey, you keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.